So today I just thought we'd take a look at two different cordless post hole augers. We have this super handy 48 volt. This is a right out of the box option. We're also going to look into the Milwaukee, the M18 Super Hole with the auger and adapter that we buy separately. So first up, let's take a look at the super handy 48 volt 6 inch auger kit. It has a brushless motor and planetary gearbox. It comes with a 48 volt battery. I've already taken it out of the box like so because I've already charged it. Here's the charger. I've taken it out of the box also, obviously. Plugs in like so. I mean, I don't hate it. It's not that bad. At least it's a pretty powerful charger. This is our forward and reverse. Got like a safety interlock there. You can see the battery indicator from up top, so I do like that. Also comes with a really nice six inch auger. I do like the tapered drill tip as well as the two different style cutting blades on each side there. So this thing is really easy to put together. We just slide the auger on. And just slide the quick pin in. There we go. And I've already got the battery charged. So just like that, we are ready to go. So thumbs up for convenience there. It is ready to go very quickly. And you know it's slow, but it seems like it might have a lot of power. We'll check it out. So a little bit of context here, guys. So I have a lot of fence, and this fence is starting to get in bad shape. So this is gonna be a big ongoing project. This is not something I'm gonna do in one week. I have many, many posts that are starting to rot, and it's about a half an acre fenced in all together. It would probably cost around $10,000 to totally just replace the fence. So of course what I'm looking at here is over the course of a few years, using an auger and some other tools every so often and get out here and replace five to 10, you know, post at a time or however many is giving me an issue. As you can see here, a lot of these are broke off with the ground, just rocking them back and forth and they move easy. So I have sections of fence that is really, really close to hitting the ground. So that's one reason I'm not interested in gas powered augers at all. I've used some in the past and most of them work pretty well, obviously. It's just that over years and using them every six months or so, I just feel like I'll be working on carburetors more than I will my fence. So I want to know is that another viable option out there that'll help you just dig beside a post when you need it. Cause honestly, I just don't care to use manual hole diggers that much anymore. So as you see here, I got a good bit all the way down. I got a section here that I've had to replace because of this tree. You can see in the top left, the tree ended up coming down and taking the fence. And I just built back and put a gate there. Um, but it goes all the way around to where a six by six is over here at this gate that is also rotten completely. So before I get started showing the augers and just putting them through test, I want to go ahead and say here in the video that I do use a farm jack with just a concrete anchor, like a Tapcon three eighths or a half inch anchor and chain to pull up some of these posts as shown here in this part of the video. So this is fairly easy most of the time if you can push the fence back far enough and the concrete doesn't go so far back that you got to tear all the fence down. But just want to show here that this is a way to do it as well. I'm not trying to show the auger being better but I'm thinking maybe the auger will help. So a lot of this is going to be just testing the augers out here and not necessarily what I'm saying is the right way to get a post out of the ground. So the first time using this super handy, just trying to get it close to the post here. Of course, we got concrete around it, but you notice you can't get really close to the post the way these handles are, but try to go down beside it here. It's actually got a good bit of power, but you can tell when you hit a root, it's got the torque, but you have to hold it at slow speed. It makes it really, really tough to hold on to and get it started back. Cause you don't have that speed to help you. If you try to hold it, it's got a lot of torque. You just kind of have to reverse it out as it gets hung up.
But here I'm just trying to learn how to hold these handles. You don't have a whole lot of leverage on these handles. This is more like a Tesla or lawnmower steering wheel. It's not really a lot of leverage here on the handles at all. It did fairly good on this hole. We did have a few rocks and some roots to get through and it did get through them just a little slow. I'm gonna go down to the next post and let's try it. I'm learning here that I have to kind of lean on it and put my weight on it. I even put my um, my leg into it. Any kind of rock or root that it hits, it's really wanting to bind up. But if I hold it tight, I can force it down. We do notice here that the LED for run does switch over to overload detected with the red LED but it is going pretty good see how far we can go down there after it gets past those roots it's actually doing really good we did see this going from the green on to the overload detected LED during that hole so that dirt's pretty decent to dig in. Just It did have some rocks and roots. Wasn't super fast, but it's much easier than manual post hole diggers for sure. And just to show you here, this post here has a little bit of the meat left on it. I believe we might be able to pull this post up with the concrete and all by the post. If I do dig around it, I might even go ahead and do three holes here. First of all, just to to show the use of the new super handy auger as well as hopefully making it easier to pull this up without breaking the post because it is very weak yeah i can feel it flexing there but i think that'll pull straight up now that we've got three holes there just for the sake of the video and just testing out the auger we could have got by with one hole for sure but it may not have come up like this just lagging a two by four on here and now we can just take the two by four and use it for leverage and it come up with no problems. Remove our lag screw. And I'm just gonna put a new post in. I'm gonna put a couple bags of concrete, post setter. Pack it in and level it going to add some water and this is not a how-to video on setting a post or fence repair by any means just showing the context of what i'm doing here going through the testing with the auger but do want to share that i am trying my best to make the water shed away from the post i tried to make sure the concrete was also pushed up in a mound as well as the finished dirt being pushed up into a mound because we can see on this post we have a lot of rot above the concrete and ground level just simply because of the way that this naturally is cupped and it kind of dishes to pool moisture and water up on top and they definitely make a product called post saver they're just sleeves that go on to protect the post and i really do like the idea a lot but i just don't know if they're really worth 17 dollars that's actually more than i paid for the post so if any viewers out there have a recommendation one way or another on these post savers please feel free to comment below i'd like to hear your opinion on that but i was building a brand new fence i believe i would try it so bad news to report on the super handy i was using it right after that last post was set and it didn't last any time and it did go into overload detected and then instead of protecting itself it just stopped on me and the battery was showing three bars still but i went ahead and took it in and charged it to make sure it was fully charged nothing's wrong with the battery but it won't come on until you take it out of the auger so the battery is actually good plug it in and it goes off immediately and i'll try to show here again the lights on like so push it in goes so the battery itself is picking up a short circuit condition i'm going to assume it's some kind of mosfet issue on the speed controller since it's a brushless dc motor but not to worry i had more pamphlets in here than i did parts and pieces and the super handy Telling me that Great Circle has you covered. Contact us. No worries. We also have a 
email. I couldn't get through on the phone, but I have left a message at this point. I also have sent an email. A little bit disappointed. Told them I'd like to get some parts for it or something here. I do have electronics channel. Wouldn't mind getting the parts myself if they can do that. But just showing here on the bench again what's going on with it. The next day it's doing the same thing still. No change. So we take a meter and go across our plus and minus terminals. Is it a dead short like we're thinking? Absolutely. Just to make sure it's not a diode. Yeah, dead short. So something's going on with the controller and the battery actually picked up on it, which is actually very impressive for the battery, but will be super handy if they would get back with me and send me some parts for this thing. And it'd been pretty handy if it wouldn't have gave issue to start with. So let's wait and see how to proceed based on how they respond. But it's super handy. Right now I'm down and out. I got another idea in mind for this video, but I have not bought that item yet. It's a pretty good expense here on me all at one time to do more than one of these at a time. So I was gonna make this like a two or three month run video uh, and compile it together. I still hadn't heard back from them. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this myself because it's got me held up and it is a fully potted brushless controller which is probably going to be an issue the only other thing i would like to do is be able to check the motor and make sure it's not bad so to do that i gotta pull the housing apart just four phillips screws and the shaft housing comes off and i really do like the way this bearing assembly is we have a heavy duty roller bearing as well as a thrust bearing assembly where that adapter goes into the gearbox so we separate the housing we do see a brushless motor with a planetary gearbox. And very interesting, we see we only have two wires on the battery connector, so any 48 volts in the control actually would have run it, so that's actually a good thing. That's not looking for any communication or any feedback from the battery to simply run. So the controller's doing all the smarts on that. The motor's definitely not locked down, which we didn't believe it was. No reason to go into the gearbox at all, but I don't see a way to get to the motor to do any actual own testing or either running the motor with our own controller to verify the motor's fine. So it looks like we are just still going to have to wait and see if they reply at all with any parts they might send out. So now the second day it's been sitting here just verifying that it still shows a dead short and absolutely no change. I got one email back from the company and they would just said, sorry to hear you having issues with it, but I still have no direction on if they're going to send me any parts or help me out at all. And the way this controller is, they're pretty much just going to have to send me one. So I'll give another day or so. Meantime, let's go ahead and look into the battery because I'm actually impressed with the battery. It actually worked very well. And I was very impressed at how well it picked up a dead short. It almost looked like a battery issue the way it was acting, but it's not. The battery really just picked up a dead short that quick. And I had inserted it many, many times. Still showing fully charged. No problem there. We have a MOSFET here for our control or our switching, which I believe is what's cutting that off and on. It's a good looking pack, really. The spot wells are good. We just have our 12 cells just in a 12S or 12 series configuration to give us our 48 volts. And yes, it's a lot of things to like about the battery pack itself, but I'm just gonna put this back together. And since I have not heard from the company, I'm probably just gonna simply send this back to Amazon. So hopefully they can get it and look at it and be able to find their fault on the controller, you know, for their own benefit and hopefully eliminate any future failures. And what I'll do is I'll put this back together and I might show that down on the corner of the video while I show my next option consisting of the Thunder Bay 6 inch auger. It's only $68 and I'm trying to do this on a budget. So how close could I come to the same price as the Super Handy? Putting together my own Super Hog and auger. So I did find a really, really good deal on this on Amazon. It looks like it was more of an open box to me, but I was after the deal. I'm okay with it as long as it looks new and it does. The oil kind of concerning, but I don't know that they all don't drip a little bit of oil out of the bag. I know it's a good bit of oil in that gearbox. 
as I look at the chuck, I don't believe it's been used at all. To go along with the Super Hog, I also had to get this adapter. So this is a 7 16 hex adapter for $55. It is a centered material, it looks like. It is very strong. You're not going to really be able to drill it. You're not going to really bend it. It's very strong. I got an 8 amp hour battery I'm going to use that I already had. Yeah, I'm not going to do it on high speed. Let's, let's change that to low. <laughs> low speed, 0 to 500. I do have some oil to clean off the handle here so I can get a better grip. We also have this handle, and this is a solid rod handle, so this is not a tube. This is more like a half inch solid rod, so it is very strong. I like that a lot. So instead of like a little steering wheel, you almost have like bike handlebars. You got a lot more leverage here. And this also has a mechanical clutch, which thank God for that. This thing's gonna be really, really strong. So the bolt that came with the auger is a little bit too big for my adapter. So I'm going to have to go with a 5 16 that I already had for now. So it's going to be a little bit loose. But we'll go ahead and put this on here to demonstrate it. Locks in easy. We just do have some play there uh, due to that bolt. But it'll be all right. We'll make do. Let's just go ahead and finish up this hole here where the super handy auger stopped. This thing already got through all the roots and all to be fair, but it's the auger's doing fine with this dirt. No problems whatsoever. And I really do like the Super Hog. It's got a lot of power. So after that post, the next job on the list for today is this 6x6 six six post. So believe it or not, this 6x6 six six post for the gate seems like it's just totally rotted out i can see some four by fours rotting out completely but that six by six just is crazy all right harvey dog i gotta take the gate down to work on it you're gonna have to go inside you ready to go got my son eli out here now and as we pry the fence off the post he just simply lays it over here this six by six is totally rotted not just flush rotted like deep rot even into the concrete as we'll show later so eli got some footage of me using the whole hog here with this thunder bay auger and the auger's having a really tough time with this ground and to be fair this ground gets compacted a lot where the lawnmower runs through the gate so this is probably the most packed soil in the backyard but this auger is having a tough time with it and being really rough on the super hog to the point that i done went through by all my batteries and charging them now i actually have the fake eight amp hour battery pack that i got from amazon on here and it seems to be working well Ooh, that's a battery oh my gosh so Eli got some good footage of that fake battery. Smoking. Letting the smoke out of it. I looked at it later. It actually vaporized one of the nickel metal strips, the one for the negative yep. connector. <laughs> with the design of this auger with the fishtail and the just one cutting blade, it really does struggle with the roots and the hard ground here. We'll show a little bit more video of this, but this is this is pretty much what we've done here around this post just to get some holes in the ground to uh, to get up the concrete. It's a good bit of concrete around this six inch post. And we just got a lot of roots here, right? So just the way that this is designed with the fish tail and this one cutting edge of the auger, it just has a really, really tough time with the roots. So just to show here, after we got a few holes dug, we did just put a cheap bottle jack in here and push this large concrete setting out. We got it out from up under the fence and just got it to move a little bit. And that worked really well for the money. Just putting it in there with a block behind it and pushing it out because the fence is back as far as I can go without taking it apart. Then I just took my hammer drill, ended up going all the way to 5 8 I had a long 5 8 bit, so I just went all the way through since the middle was rotted out as mentioned. Then I could just take a bar and put through in a chain, and we were able to lift that up really easily with the farm jack. So I just happened to have a half inch rod around from an old treadmill I took parts out of. And there we go. Let this down. I'll get Eli to come help me get this out of there. Eli's just showing here how I had it with the bar through and the chain was through the middle because that six by six was so rotted out. It was just that easy to hook to this one. Didn't even need to put in no anchors. I had to drill at an angle because of you know the ground I had to go down, but it worked really well. 
So Eli's gonna get us as deep as we can here before we put that new six by six in the ground. And I think I need to look into a different auger. So back now, I got the Makita six inch auger and this thing is great. It's very lightweight. I really like the tip. It's actually a lot like the super handy auger. It's actually got some better looking blades on it, replaceable as well. And I really love the shape of that tapered drill point. So the next day, I think I want to try that new Makita auger out on these three right here together. So this is on the farthest end of the property and I have three posts here I have a little bit of fence damage. I have had a tree fall in this area, but I believe these posts are just that rotten. You can see the way this looks in the light out here in the daytime. I believe it's going to do a really good job for us. So I'm excited to see how this does. We got some pine straw here to go through first and then yeah, it's doing pretty good. We still got a good many pine roots around. We got the concrete to deal with from the post itself to stay away from, which of course we always have to watch out. But that's doing really, really good. I think these two together here are gonna be the ticket. You do hear that mechanical clutch kick in every now and then. And we don't have to drill three holes here. I'm just doing it mainly to test out this super hole with the new Makita auger. And it will definitely make it easier since we see here as we cut the post loose. Definitely ride it completely out. Instead of getting the jack out, I'm just going to use the 4x4 post that I'm going to put in the hole. Along with a 2x4. And just work it like chopsticks here. And just see if I can just work it out of the hole. Lift it up. I'm going to push the two by four under to hold it. And that way I can just roll it over. One way to do it by yourself if you don't have a jack. And while that four by four sets up, I'll start working on the next one, augering the holes. We are hitting some roots and some rocks here, but it's making pretty quick work. And I do love the way that this auger will bring the dirt up because it's spinning fast enough to load it up. And when you bring it up, it's fast enough to sling it off. And that does make a really, really big difference to me is I'm just now getting used to how these work, but I really like that about it. So I'm just gonna try two holes with this one. And of course we're rotted off on this one as well. So that's four posts in a row now that's completely rotted through. I am aware of a product called Post Buddy. You can drive these little flat stakes down into, in between the concrete and the post and give it some strength. I, I believe it's more of a band-aid, but these are broke completely. So really I don't even think using these to try to get the post and concrete up together would work because the post is so rotted down within the concrete, you know, I think it's just too far gone. But again, it's an option if yours are not that bad, I guess, to help get the concrete and post up together. I can see how that could be effective in certain uh, circumstances, but, but it really wouldn't work here in my case. So even with just augering two holes, it really wasn't hard to get this one up either. Go ahead and auger in deep as we can. And we'll just take the manual post hole diggers and get the rocks and loose dirt up. 
And that's about as much as I like to use a manual post hole digger, honestly. Bring in the concrete. Just show really quick here. We're going to put the concrete in the hole. Again, the video ain't really about fencing as much as just testing out the augers and just how I use them here on my property today. Just going to level this post up a bit, pour some water in, and we'll let it set. We'll just keep a check on the level. Go ahead and cut the next post down, and yep, that's five in a row. It's been completely rotted through. So I do want to show this super hog being used one more time, so I'm going to do two holes with this one as well. Me and Harvey Dog both getting used to this thing. He thinks I'm playing with him. <laughs> I'm really, really getting used to it here and I'm really liking how well this cordless auger setup is working. I do have a lot of rocks and concrete at the bottom. It's given a little bit of problem, but it's still getting through it. It will break it up and push it up. It'll spin a lot of the dirt off too, so I really like that. There's another rock. So that's got two holes down beside it. We'll just get them cleaned out really well. Drop a block in there for some leverage. I'll get my four by four and pull. And on this one, I ended up having to come get my son Eli to help me to get this one up without having to go get my jack out for this one post. So back out here a few days later, it had rained and the ground is wet, so just showing some of this clay and how it responds to the auger being wet. Of course, it's messier, but it's easier to deal with. One hole really quick. I'm going to drill a 3 8 hole and use the 3 8 Capcom bolt. And use the chain to pull this up with the farm jack. So this is really my preferred method, just using the one hole in front and then the farm jack to pull up. These are the type Tapcon anchors I'm using here. These are 3 eighths by 4 inch. I also have the half inch by 4 inch as well as regular wedge anchors. The problem with these, of course, is they're just one-time use. And I do have a D-ring, and I have tried to pull them up from the top before, and sometimes it is successful, but a lot of times it'll break out because you don't know exactly how tapered the concrete is in the hole, and you're also pulling up on the bolt instead of on the side of it. So after doing a little bit of testing with these cordless hole augers, this is what we have now. So I have several posts done here on my front end of the property. Of course, if we go back towards where that gate is, it's been done. We have the three that we just got done together. And that last part of the video, which is on the back part here. Then I have all this over here on the road side of the property that is still in pretty good shape right now. None of those posts are showing rotted through yet. And then up here is where we had the six by six post by the gate. We had a four by four post beside it as well. I'm really happy to get that six by six done because that gate was getting to be a problem to open with that completely rotted out six by six. So in summary here, we had the super handy auger. I think I paid $329 for it, and now it's showing $299.
I would say overall, I'll give it an A for being lightweight and easy to use. The power, I give it like a B rating because it's so low speed. It did have a lot of torque, but that also makes me give it an F for speed. The auger they send with it, I give it an A. It worked really, really well. Almost as good as the Makita auger, really. The battery, I give the battery an A because the battery did well. And for short circuit protection, it did very well. I give it overall a light duty rating. The customer service, I have to give an F. And I have no choice but to give it an F for longevity because mine did not last but one post. To be fair, it was three holes, but it's got one post up. Maybe give it one and a half. Now the Milwaukee Super Hog, I did find the deal on it here on Amazon while they last for $348. For what I was using one for, I was even happy if it was open box or whatever. It was like it was new and not used. I understand if you want to go to the big box store and get your warranty. I can totally agree with you on that, and I understand it. For the purpose of this video, I was trying to get the closest I could to price range, knowing that the Milwaukee Fuel was going to be more, but to not be much more is still very impressive. And I do want to give it a B for being lightweight, because it really was not much more total weight than a Super Handy, but it did weigh a little bit more. Of course, that was with a bigger battery as well, an 8 amp hour battery. For power, I definitely give it a rating of an A. Had plenty of power. Speed, I'm going to give it an A plus because you can go further with speed than I'm willing to take it. Uh, low speed, 0 to 500, and you also have a 0 to 1550 RPM range as well. The battery, I give an A plus because if you already have Milwaukee, you know, you shoot what you bring. You know, you, you already have it. Use what you got. So really can't beat that if you're already in the M18 platform and they really hold up well and you got a lot of options to choose from all the way to 12 amp hour i definitely give this a heavy duty rating customer service i have i just have to say i don't know i have never used it and with this being an amazon purchase like this you probably only got to your amazon return on it just remember that i might get registered but i haven't tried longevity i'm going to give it an a because it's held up with no issues and i've had no issues with any milwaukee fuel tool i've ever bought so just to show here there are many other options even on amazon you can get the whole kit with two five amp hour packs and a charger for example and it's just a lot of money um i wouldn't recommend a kit it's not really worth the price difference to me there's a lot of different buying options of course available now with this auger bit adapter, it worked really, really well. I ended up buying it for around $55, but it has since then went up to right at $64. But overall rating, it's just gotta be an A. It worked great. It's made out of a really strong, like centered material. Very, very strong. It's a lot of money, but you only buy it once. Just don't lose it. All right, the Thunder Bay six inch auger. I really wanted to like it for the price it's hard to argue a lot but i did not like that fishtail tip at all and just the one blade on the bottom of the auger really limited this auger to being for soft or loose soil so i give it a b rating for that but for the heavy roots and rock soil i give it a f it just beats you to death the fishtail tip i give a f because it really only works well with gas augers i guess because they don't reverse so not really thinking of that i guess it's not really designed to be reversed with the screw on fishtail tip so for me in the ground that i have here in the south it just didn't work out that great on the other hand the makita six inch auger it worked really really well I'm very impressed with how it was built the light weight of it and just how good it worked and all the different soils in my different areas for heavy roots and rocks i give it an a rating softer or loose soil i give it an a plus because it was just phenomenal a twist point tip was a plus it stayed on track and it just really dug well of course there's other options as well that's already proven and known to be good these makita brushless auger kits are really awesome i mean that's what really got my attention for these it's just simply the money um this one on amazon 700 dollars too much for two only for me this is a 36 volt that would take two of the 18 volt. And I do already have Makita batteries, but that's just a lot of money. But I really like the way this is designed and the way the handle is. You can see in this picture, it looks like it would just be super handy if you already have Makita stuff and didn't mind spending the money difference. I believe this will be an awesome choice for Augur. These also have many buying options. And this one in particular comes with two five amp hour batteries. And it's a lot better deal than buying it individually as shown and the kits get even better you can go to the kit that's got the batteries and the auger and the extension bar for the auger so if you wanted to go deeper this one happens to be an eight inch auger which is bigger than i really wanted to go with at this time 
But this, for around $1,000, you can get it all. So I think that's a little bit cheaper than the big box stores, if you look around. For example, Home Depot with some of the same items we discussed in the Super Hog like I have with the 7 16 hex quick lock. You also have the key chuck option. You have the key chuck with the kit option as well. You have the 7 16 quick lock with the kit version and other options as well. So here we even see the Makita that's got like the 7 16 hex. It's going to be real similar to the Super Hog. It just doesn't have the, the handle for the auger like Makita makes for the other one. And by the way, this is 40 volt. So this is a special 40 volt battery and not the two 18 volts making 36 volts on this one. Just to mention that there. They also have a really good price here on just the right angle drill that doesn't have all the handle for the auger. But for 479, that's actually pretty decent. But when you go up to the one that is really the earth auger, you see that the price goes up a good bit. And we also see the replaceable blade set for the auger, if you're interested, as well. So I hope you found this video helpful today. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to have some links down to some of these items down in the video description. Any of those links you click on are affiliate links, and they help support the channel, and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching, and God bless.